Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have another handheld radio which is boasted to be IP54 rated along with a power output of 5 watts covering the 2 meter and 70 centimeter handbands. Our usual accessories are found in the box along with a rather comprehensive user's manual. Now the manual is fully in English and is quite well written. It appears the manuals in these types of radios are becoming more useful than we've seen before. Of course, a lanyard and belt clip is included, along with a rather strange looking charger. In fact, this is nothing more than a USB outlet, something like you'd use to charge a mobile phone. Included with this charger is a USB to USB-C cable, so that can only mean one thing. This radio can be recharged using USB. A standard flexible antenna is also included with a standard frequency coverage of 136 to 174 MHz and then 400 to 520 MHz. The included rechargeable battery states it has a capacity of 1800 mAh, something which could be believable as it's quite chunky and has some decent weight to it. Now the battery itself screws tightly onto the radio using just that one screw down the bottom. So bear that in mind if you're going to be using more than one battery, you'll need some form of screwdriver to swap them out. Now the front of the radio shows off a 1.7 inch color screen along with a backlit keypad. The keys on this radio are more recessed than I've seen on previous radios, but they do have a solid feel to them when pressed. Changing frequency, navigating menus and changing memory channel is performed using the two up and down arrow buttons located in the middle of the radio. On the left side of the radio, we find three buttons. The top button controls the LED torch, which is located on the top of the radio, and the lower two buttons are the PTT and function button. On the right side at the top, there appears to be another button, but this is just some kind of blanking plate and has no function to my knowledge. Below this, behind the rubber flap, we find a speaker mic connection, and of course, like most radios, this also acts as a programming port when used with a programming cable and software. But when it comes to charging the battery, we find a dedicated USB-C charging port on the battery itself. So this means you cannot charge the battery through the radio itself, which is a bonus if you have more than one battery, unless of course you have a desktop charger. Side slots and rear connections also make this possible to charge the battery in a desktop charger. However, I did not receive one with this radio. On the top, we have one rotary control, which turns the radio on and off, and it also controls the volume level. Also on the top, there's the usual antenna connection, and of course, that obligatory torch LED. Now going through the menu seems pretty standard and nothing really new here until we get right to the end, where we see a stopwatch. Now maybe I missed this on other radios, but I really don't remember seeing a stopwatch on a radio before. Now I can understand a torch or even a broadcast radio, but why a stopwatch? Now maybe one of you can provide a valid reason why on earth we would want a stopwatch in a radio like this. In fact, the most funniest reason for having a stopwatch left in the comments below will receive a brand new RTL SDR V4 with antenna kit. Now I'll give it a couple of weeks for you guys to leave some funny comments and then I'll choose the funniest one soon. This is M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing the audio on the Bayer Feng UV20L. Testing the audio on the Bayer Feng UV20L on narrow setting. This is M0DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing the Bayafeng UV20L, UV20L on the wide setting. This is now on the wide setting, uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. When it comes to power output on 2 meters at 145.450 megahertz, we see an output power of around 3.5 watts, and that's on a fully charged battery, so that's a little bit lower than advertised. Now up on 70 centimeter at 435 megahertz, we also see an output of around three and a half watts. While the 1.25 meter band at 220 megahertz, we see a surprising output of around 2.5 watts. And that's strange because the specs for this radio did not say anything about supported transmit or even receive 
at 220 MHz. Now if we bump over to testing the signal quality, it's quite disappointing on 2 meters. Transmitting at 145.450 MHz, we can see a second harmonic only 15 dB down from that fundamental. On 70 cm at 435 MHz, there is no apparent second harmonic with these power levels, meaning this radio appears to be extremely clean on the 70 cm band. So what about the 1.25 meter band? Well, even on the 1.25 meter band at 220 megahertz, there's no apparent second harmonic. The reading we saw when transmitting on 145 megahertz is actually quite bad. 15 dB down on the fundamental means you'd be clearly heard on any radio in the vicinity of where you was transmitting on that second harmonic frequency. So in my opinion, this radio would not really be usable on the two meter band, which is quite unfortunate as this radio does have a real chunky, good feel to it. Programming this radio is fairly easy. Using a CPS for the T6 UV series seemed to work flawlessly. Now programming, memory channels and radio features and functions can all be performed within the software. I just used a standard Bayerfeng programming cable which seemed to work perfectly. Now after programming a local repeater, I could chunk the repeater and it appears that the RSSI bar on the display doesn't really work as you would expect. Moving the radio around while receiving, I would have thought the RSSI bar value would change, but it was either on or off. So not really great for displaying a received signal strength. Anyway guys, that's the Bayerfeng UV20L. That's assuming that it is actually a Bayerfeng radio because I couldn't find much information about this radio online at all. No doubt it's probably another radio that's been rebadged, but if you want to get one yourself, obviously I'll leave a link in the description. Until the next video, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.